I'm doing something completely different, or it's a little different this time, I'm doing a vlog post, but it's of the public service variety. I'll do a little, yeah, you know, I can do much business or anything like that, and I'm going to do these, I'm either doing business or just a oh, post-movie vlog or something like that, but no, this is a public service announcement kind of thing. This video is probably going to go up start of October, most likely. Uh, I may actually reshuffle my queue so this goes up this month, the month of the recording this, which is September. I am recording this week of the 9th, a uh, weekend of the 9th. So, here's what's going on. Yeah, this is going to go up first weekend, first Wednesday in September. So, the week, as of this recording, which is weekend of the 9th, yesterday we lost Gary Purnell. He's a science fiction writer who has been around for a very long time. He wrote such works as The Moat in God's Eye, Lucifer's Hammer, and other excellent, excellent works of science fiction. He died at the age 84. And I bring this up because of the circumstances related to his death and what may have attributed, what contributed to his death. He died not long after attending Dragon Con, and his last blog post that he wrote before he passed, he commented on the blog that he came back from Dragon Con with what felt like a flu and a cold combined. Those of us who've been to cons for a very long time, or now himself, will recognize this as Concra. You go to a con, you're around the masses of humanity who are somewhat unwashed or somewhat un unvaccinated, who aren't up to date on their flu shots or that sort of thing. You catch something, you come home, you feel like crap for a couple days afterwards, you miss more work than perhaps you went to. Or perhaps you anticipate the con crud in advance and you take the time off for it, that sort of thing. I bring this up because this year, Portland Retro Gaming Expo is in October. And these past few years, we've lost some important people when it comes to video game history. We've lost the, the people who developed in television. We've lost Toru Iwata. That was cancer, not complications of illness in old age. Um, we lost, several years before that, Ralph Bayer. And as someone who does a podcast, who does a, a YouTube video series about video game history, it's practically a podcast in its regularity, but as someone who, who covers video game history, who cares a lot about the history of video games, who wants to learn as much as he can about video game history, I can't help but think, looking at all this, and, and he's hearing about Purnell's death, and go, you know... Herb, immun or herb immunity, herd immunity, I should say, is important for a reason. It helps protect people in society who have compromised immune systems, whether due to other illnesses like HIV and AIDS, or because of youth and old age. And the people from the early days of video games, people who worked on designing television, the Atari 2600 and 5200 and 7400, people who worked on the ColecoVision, on the NES, on the Master System, who worked on these very old games, on the oldest PC games, people like Richard Garriott, uh, Will Wright, Ed Meyer, they're not getting younger. Oh, Eugene Jarvis, who people who were significant contributors to the history of video games, and in the case of people like like Meyer and Jarvis, who are still actively contributing video games and video game history, they're getting up there. They're reaching the point where, I mean, whether or not they like to admit it, old age is going to start weakening their immune systems. Old age is going to start slowing them down in certain degrees. And if we as game historians, as fans, as enthusiasts, want to still see these people coming to our game convent game conventions where we can sit and hear their stories and go shake their hands and tell them thank them tell them how much we appreciate the work they've done. Thank them for how their contributions have affected our lives 
have affected, particularly, well, in the case of the people who have worked in the hardware side of things, hardware and software side of things, how their works have, a, to a degree, a not insignificant degree, changed the world. We want them to be around to tell the story, keep to tell the stories that they haven't had a chance to tell yet, and to create new works and do new things to forward this medium that we care about. We got to do stuff to help keep them, to make sure that we don't contribute to their no longer being able to. And what that means is you got to get your flu shots. That seemed like a very anticlimactic statement to make after that big, long build-up. But we're approaching cold and flu season. Flu shots are becoming available. Get your flu shots. If you are insured and have access to a patient medical record, a personal medical record with your doctor's office, and you have things set up, or they have things set up to remind you when you need to get your inoculations. Get your shots. Make sure you're current. Um, this isn't just a matter now of just good hygiene, wash your hands, shower every morning, that sort, or evening, preferably every morning. Or cleaning sure you are clean and you're not walking around in a haze of germs. But also, get your shots. Make sure that you at least are not the person who spreads the flu to other people, to people who are not able to properly defend from it for various, various reasons. That is what I ask. This is not going to be a long video, but just get your flu shot. It actually may be cheaper to get than you think. Places like Walgreens, most places with pharmacies, Walgreens, Walmart, um, grocery stores with pharmacies like Kroger or Fred Meyers, depending on the part of the country you're in, has that. Costco, if you have a Costco card, they do flu shots for 10 bucks. They are like the cheapest flu shot you can get outside of your doctor's office if you have insurance. So get your flu shot. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.